I'm Claire Sanderson and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Women's Health. Welcome to Women's Health Weekenders and I am absolutely over the moon by the guest I am joined by today. She is a Commonwealth Games and an Olympian and not only that, she's the four times CrossFit World Champion which makes her the fittest woman in the world. She needs no further introduction. Please welcome Tia Claire Toomey. Hi, Tia. How are you today? Hi. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. So are you in Tennessee at the moment? Yes. Yes. So currently I am um, in our apartment here in Cookville, Tennessee, um, in the United States. And uh, it's very cold. It actually just started snowing. Oh. And is that that quite unusual for you? Because you wouldn't get that in Australia, would you? Oh yes, it's it's very unusual. But we've been here now for twenty four months, so it's um, oh. we've had a like you know a couple of winters like this, so it's been really nice. Very different to Australia, though. I can I can imagine. I can imagine. And as I just said, you are the four times CrossFit Games champ, and you won again this year. So congratulations! It was a slightly different tournament this year, there though, in light of everything that's going on in the world. So how did you find it? Um, it was very different. I think that there was, um, you know, due to a reduced amount of field that we had, we got a lot more out of it. Um, you know, athletes were able to be a little bit more intimate with each other. We literally would move from location to location together. Um, whereas when there was like 150 athletes from the year before, very rarely were we actually with each other because there was just such a large group. Um, and so that intimacy was actually really special and something that I actually really appreciated. Also having the connection and the organizers being not as stressed out as past years because mm-hmm. there's so many moving parts where this year it was a little bit more low key. That was really great to also be able to have a, a little bit more of an enjoyable enjoyable experience in that regards um but then we obviously missed out on having the fans and and people there that were cheering us on so that was a little um you know very different um but it had its perks it had you know a lot of things that were really good um obviously with uh, the year that we've all had that's definitely been an experience where I feel we were able to, um, I guess, come out on on the bright side of things. So you were just telling me about the CrossFit Games and the word that stood out to me was enjoyable because I have watched all the documentaries and it certainly does not look enjoyable. <laughs> the, I think you guys are superhuman. I have to say, I think it is simply baffling the all-round strength and fitness that you guys display so you know you can be an expert in in your field in various sports whether you're a sprinter whether you're a rower but it's really quite audacious that you are so remarkably good at everything And, and that has to come down to mental strength above physical capability what would you put it down to 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 have that sort of dexterity to to be amazing at everything you turn your hand to in sport. Oh, well, thank you. Um, you know, I think that we train so hard to compete at our absolute best when it comes to the CrossFit Games. And so when it comes to the Games, when everyone sees us at our prime and um, at our absolute best, it, it is incredible and it's amazing what we do, but we train all year round for that. And so when it comes to the CrossFit Games, that's that's why we train. That's what we train for. And so training is so much harder than, than what we get at the CrossFit Games. And it's definitely a really good test of fitness, but it just showcases how hard we really work throughout the season. Um, and I think that that's what is just so incredible uh, about the athletes that do go to the Games. They put in so much time and energy and they don't know what they're preparing themselves Mm. for but no matter what the test is they're able to come and you know stand up to the challenge and face it 
and just wow everyone in the world that admires the sport. So what's your favorite discipline and which one do you really not like? You know, that, that's something that obviously comes up very often and it's a hard one to answer because I've learned to get so comfortable with the uncomfortable that there isn't really a, um, a th thing like I'm, I'm just trying to think like, you know, what is it that I don't enjoy? I enjoy the whole process, the, the whole process, everything that I do, every bit of training that I do. I love it so much because I can, I trust in the process so much that, I can see the benefit for it. And so whether it's hard or, you know, there, there are things that may come a little easier to me due to my upbringing and what I did back in the day, it, there's still that level of challenge that uh, it provides that's constantly making me better. And I think that that's what um, I've been able to do really well at is just embrace those challenges and embrace the, the pain, I suppose, if you will. Um, which is what all the athletes do. You know, we, we love training so much because we, we're just so competitive in what we do that we want to constantly get better. And so there is not really one particular uh, exercise, movement, workout that I can really pinpoint that I'm like, that was horrible. Mm. There's like, you know, each, each workout provides that satisfaction at the very end. And I think that that's what that's what draws us back into it. Do you ever have days like us mere mortals where you wake up and you just think, can't be bothered. No, really just can't be bothered today. Or definitely. Or, and how do you yeah, get through that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so it, you know, I think everyone goes through those, uh, those moods and, you know, not every day is going to be a nice, bright, sunny day where it's warm and, you know, you can, you feel great. Your body's not sore. Like every day I'm pulling out sore because I've pushed it that much the day before. And so it's those days when you think back to your why and the people that you surround yourself with and your sacrifices and, and even the people that you're with their sacrifices in order to help you to get you where you want to go they're the motivators that you need in your life. Um, and I think that, you know, when you are grounded and you are surrounding yourself with really good people, you want to push yourself and you want to execute what you need to in order to, you know, repay them back for their time and effort, repay them back for their support. And for me, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are involved in that circle and that I consider very close, whether I know them or not, you know, everyone that, follows me on Instagram, follows my YouTube series, you know, felt just is always communicating with me through Facebook and emails. And, you know, those people are such important motivators because if I didn't have the belief and support of them, it would be very hard on those days when I didn't want to get out of bed or I just wanted to watch, you know, Netflix and, you know, binge eat all day. But I know that there's a bigger picture and it's because of those things I'm able to push on and, you know, embrace and really enjoy the journey. So you mentioned the team around you and everyone knows that your, your coach is your lovely husband, Shane, who I feel I know just from watching the documentaries, to be honest, because he's, <laughs> he's very present there. And I, lo I love your story that you met when you were teenagers doing a triathlon and, and he spotted you coming out of the water and he, he said it was this sort of James Bond moment. <laughs> and you Embarrassing. Come out yes. and you hit water out of a, a year or something. He was like, that's the woman for me. And then he almost killed himself trying to keep up with you. <laughs> so you have such a, a romantic, beautiful, lifelong love story. But he is your coach as well. And that must be a really tricky relationship to navigate because when he's barking orders at you you sort of have to separate husband and wife and be coaching and coachy so how, how does that play out yeah it's very interesting it has its challenges um don't worry I definitely give him some back um <laughs> anyone that's ever around us or has uh you know had the 
I don't know, experience of, of being in our, in our surroundings, they've realized, wow, okay, yeah, I mean, it works, but there's a lot of bickering back and forth to get to that, um, that spot. But, um, you know, that's what makes us us. Uh, and when I look back on our journey, you know, Shane was the one that introduced me to CrossFit. Um, and it was never something that we thought we were going to be here. You know, we know we, if you had asked us seven years ago, where do you see us? It would definitely not have been where we are today and what we've accomplished. And I think that a lot of people that don't know us or are still understanding like our dynamic, they don't fully realize how involved Shane is. And, you know, some people have mentioned that I give him way too much credit, but, um, you know, it's, it's such a unique situation where even before CrossFit, Shane helped my dad coach me for my running. Um, it's, it's a passion of ours. And I think the best way for me to explain it to people is this is a hobby. You know, we, we look at this as a passion and something that we get to do together. And we are just, because we've worked so hard for this, you know, him and I, um, we are fortunate enough to be able to financially support ourselves as well throughout this journey. And it definitely didn't come overnight. Like that, that has just been a eight year process, but um, we are fortunate enough to be able to do what we love and what we're both passionate about together. And it's formed and we have this equation that has worked, you know, I'm the one that, loves to compete and you know be the center of attention and you know put my body out on the line whereas he is the uh brains behind it and has this full understanding and passion about learning and educating himself on how to constantly keep getting better and we've been able to bring them both together and it's complemented each other so well that Yes, I am an individual athlete. I do an individual sport, but it's very team orientated. And then we've been able to do this journey together. So we've built this whole profile and we've built this whole experience together, standing side by side and going through the thick and thin. And we've been able to meet new new people create relationships that we never thought were going to be possible and and these friendships that have formed are going to be lifelong friendships that have helped and molded us along the journey um and so when you have experiences like that when you have uh, a best friend a life partner you know and and you can call him your husband um and you get to do that together it, one, it's not lonely, um, which I think is very important. And sometimes you do get caught up in, in the whole, um, you, you just can get caught up and then you realize like, oh, wow, you know, maybe I, maybe I don't have as many friends as what I thought I had or whatever, but I don't ever feel like that because I actually have the right people around me. And, and, you know, I've got, I've literally got Shane doing what I love alongside with me. Um, and there are definitely times where we bicker, like I said before, but when it comes to competition and it comes to training, I trust his methodology and I trust that everything he is getting me to do, everything that he is, you know, explaining to me or programming or whatever it is, even if I don't like it, it's for my own good. It's for what I really want to achieve. Um, and I think what's also very important is, he he's never pushed or tried to influence me on goals of his own. You know, if he has goals of his own, they've stemmed off my original goals. And so, you know, it, it actually may come across as like how selfish I may be um, because, you know, I've wanted to go out and achieve certain things and he has helped me achieve them. So essentially he's had to like stop his life to help me achieve mine, but he's found his own goals along that path and trajectory as well. Um, and, you know, with all that history, with all that emotion and 
you know, thoughtfulness and selflessness, you know, that's, that is what allows us to be able to do what we do because I appreciate him and I understand how much he does do things for me. And when it comes to game day, he's the boss. So, you know, I'll listen to him because I know and trust that he is going to get me to where I want to be. Um, and so I think that that equation that we've been able to organically form, nothing's been forced. That is like really shaped our relationship and how it just works so well. I read that you said that if you were to have children and Shane was to coach the children, you'd feel sorry for them because he would be so tough on them. He can be so mean. Oh. <laughs> you know, that there's days where I definitely, you know, there, there'll be a workout that I'm like, Shane, this is like physically impossible. Like you cannot do this. And, uh, and he would like double check it and look at it and then he'll physically do it just to prove to me that someone can do it. Yeah. And if he can do it, I can definitely do it. You know, um, I'm a lot fitter than he is. So, um, <laughs> that's, I guess that stubbornness that we both mm -hmm. have can somewhat work in our favor if you use it right. Um, and so I just think that when we do have kids, they'll be too young and probably won't want to disrespect their father. And so I'll have to, you know, discreetly behind, you know, where they can't see, I'll have to be like, hey, I think you're a little hard on them. You know, they're, <laughs> they're only eight years old. <laughs> But it's, it, it's not all on the sports field for you. It's, it, you're, you're, a, you're a married couple. What do you do in your downtime when you're just relaxing or you put putting a nice dress on? What, what's, what's a happy place for you? Yeah, well, I mean, this season was really long. Um, we, it was like three months longer than what it should have been. And, you know, Shane and I, we always, every year after the games, we always have a holiday booked, whether it's overseas. This year, we wanted to go to Italy and sail up along the Amalfi Coast uh, mm -hmm. with some family and friends, which would have been just stunning. Um, and then obviously COVID happened and we couldn't do that. So, you know, we love to travel. We love to go and um, experience different cultures you know I, I don't know if that's because Australia is so multicultural that you know getting to understand different cultures and, and religions and beliefs and everything like that it's it's very intriguing to us but he's also half Filipino as well so having that multicultural family blend already is definitely something that interests us um, you know learning different histories and everything like that but also just getting outside and in embracing the nature, you know, um, I wouldn't say I'm super spiritual at all, but I definitely consider myself as someone that loves to try new things, you know, um, just being able to, to do things, see the world, you know, go scuba diving and see the world underneath um, that it like, you know, that's just something that is just so eye opening and so incredible to me that, you know, I, I understand not everyone gets to do those things and, and have opportunities and experiences like that, that I want to utilize that and, and take it to, to my advantage. Um, last year, we went to Peru and hiked for seven days to Machu Picchu, you know, stuff like yeah. that is just so, it's just so enjoyable. Um, and, you know, they're, their experiences will never, ever forget. And I think that that's what's important for Shane and I. You know, after the games this year, we couldn't travel or anything. So we rented an RV and we tripped around, I want to say, oh, at least like 20 different states in the US here oh. where we just were seeing what each state had to offer. Um, we didn't really have a plan. We just kind of nomaded it and just went, went for it stayed on the road um and that was that was something that was very cool um so just things like that you know getting outside because the season requires us to be near a gym be near a facility that has everything that we need to train for and again we don't know what we're training for so we need absolutely everything you know i need my bikes i need 
my rowing machine. I need my barbells and my, my weights and they're not necessarily easy to move around. So yeah. when we are training, we're literally stuck in one area. Um, and so when we're not, and we have this awesome opportunity where we don't have to worry about training, I can let the body relax and rest as well as the mind. And we can just go wherever we want. Um, and I think that that right now in our life is something that we're really enjoying and that we really try and embrace. Yeah. So a typical training day when you're preparing for the games can be as much as 10 hours a day. That's, is that, I've read that. At least. At least. Yeah. Um, Matt and I, we got home one night and we walked in the door and we're like, that was just over a 12 hour day. Goodness. So when you're relaxing and going on your, your holidays, is it absolutely no training at all? Or is that impossible? Do you have to keep moving? Do you have to do something? Um, yeah, no. So no training at all. Um, especially for at least a month out from competition. Yeah. And then I may jump in with Shane and, you know, if he's doing this, you know, little workout where it might be just a run, And it's like, we're running through a city where we're seeing so many different things. So I'm not necessarily, I'm like getting the heart rate up. I'm moving the body, but I'm very distracted. Like there's not a lot of purpose behind the actual uh, exercise. I I will be open-minded to that. Um, But I, I mean, I haven't, I've actually done one little workout where it was uh, on Thanksgiving. We worked out before having Thanksgiving turkey and everything with uh, the family we were spending Thanksgiving with. And it was girls versus boys. And I think, you know, I did a few air squats and we did some sit-ups. We went on the bike and the ski erg and the rower and that was about it. And did like some step-ups. But it was so fun that it, it just didn't feel like a workout. Yeah. And so that was that's the only form of exercise I've done since the CrossFit Games. Um, but today I'm actually going to head back into the gym and start moving the body. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, it's the start of December and the open is in February. Yeah. Um, but I do also have something coming up in the next few weeks that I'm, I, I can't actually announce that right now, but I will in a couple of weeks. And so people will start understanding why I'm actually having to move the body now. Oh, exciting. Look forward to that. Yes. Can we talk about your nutrition? So in the UK, women's health audience are obsessed with breakfast. So what would be your ideal bre- breakfast? Breakfast, yes, to fuel a day of training. Yeah, uh, breakfast, as my dad likes to say, is the most important part of, uh, is the most important meal of the day. Um, and so I, I do like to change it up. So sometimes I just prefer to have oats, and uh, I'll have oats with some um, fried bananas cut, cut up and like actually fried. Oh, nice. And then I'll add some blueberries uh, and sometimes some strawberries. And so, you know, having a nice little warm meal, especially through winter, is uh, really, really nice and filling. Yeah. And it warms up the body. I also have some coffee in the morning. Um, and I, I typically just have like one cup of coffee. Uh, lately, especially like the month leading into the games, I actually started going dairy free. And so um, I had to learn to enjoy just a black coffee, which is not too bad now, but it took me a couple of weeks to enjoy because dairy is, was a very big thing where I didn't ever really want to let it go. But um you know, there's, there's just so much more research these days on, you know, going dairy free, gluten free and everything like that, that I just like to experiment whether it works or not. Um, I didn't necessarily think that anything changed drastically when I, um, dropped the dairy out of my nutrition, but you know, I've, I've really enjoyed and embraced the black coffees or the oat lattes. And so, um, I wouldn't consider myself fully dairy free anymore because I've, you know, after doing it for a solid month, I felt like there wasn't really a lot of change. Mm. Um, 
but I've definitely reduced the amount of cheese and butter I use. Um, I used to, I always had like, um, uh, English breakfast tea at night. So I'd always have a cup of tea. Um, I'm like obsessed with my cup of teas. Yeah. And so that was very hard to not have a dash of milk, like full cream milk in, in my cup of tea at night. And so, um, you know, I, I will have that. Yeah. Um, for me, I don't think that that's necessarily like a bad thing because it, it's such an enjoying thing and it keeps me warm um, and it's just relaxing. So that's like a huge thing. But when it comes to actually like, you know, a, a full on meal, my go to is a bagel toasted with scrambled eggs and then um, some peanut butter and sliced up apple. What is it? Is it not at the same time as a side? As a side dish. No, it's like it is. It's like so. I have like my scrambled eggs with um, a bagel, and then on the side, uh, we put on like you know chopped up half yeah, an nice. apple, or whatever. With and I like to dip it in some peanut butter. So yeah. there is not as much carbohydrates. It's a lot, a lot of a. It's more of a fattier meal. Um, but I'm okay with that because it works. You know, a lot of people would probably think that, that it's got too many fats for for breakfast but personally um that's what's so satisfying to me and as long as I feel satisfied leading into my training um I, I mean there's there's no arguing how how the body feels so um you know if I have like bacon or like I used to have some turkey bacon with it but that I've just removed that now. Um, you know, I, I just go through these phases. I also used to have avocado, but then I felt like it was too many fats for me personally. Yeah. Um, but as long as the food, like the actual food itself is wholesome, uh, I don't typically stress out about whether it's got too many fats in that particular mm -hmm. meal compared to my carbohydrates and protein. So when I was preparing for this interview, I did a call out on my Instagram and I said that I was interviewing you today and unsurprisingly, I was inundated with people paying you enormous compliments such as, she's my girl crush, wow, what a legend, I love her. I'm sure you've heard it all before and I, I asked people if they had any questions they wanted me to ask you. So if you don't mind, for a few minutes before we wrap up, I'm just going to fire off of a few course. questions. So. One was from yeah, of course, Megan, go for it. One was from Megan Lovegrove, and she's actually a CrossFitter, and she was came up. She was the number one British female this year. I don't know if you're familiar with the name, but wow. she um, she was very excited that I'm that I'm speaking to you. So, and she said a, a really lovely question. She said, um, "We know a strong mindset in sport can really improve our confidence and other aspects of life." How do you think we can encourage young women to get into sport if they are initially put off by the body aesthetics before realizing the huge psychological benefits? Yeah, um, something that helped me throughout my journey, I considered myself skinny fat. Um, I definitely had a runner's body, if you will. Um, not a lot of strength up in the in the upper body. I had to work very hard for that. Um, and so when I started transforming, toning up a lot more throughout my shoulders, my traps growing a little bit, my body was definitely changing and I had to change my whole wardrobe. Um, and the only way that I became okay with that and satisfied and started really embracing my body was when I realized what it took in order to reach my goal. So essentially you need to find a goal that you really want to do. It can't be a goal your parents want for you. It can't be a goal that your friend or mentor has tried to influence you in. It has to be a goal that's come from you personally deep down inside that you know if you achieve that, if you put in all the work that needed to, to, have, to make that happen, that you will embrace whatever that needs to, to be. So for me, I wanted to compete 
and I wanted to go to the Olympics for weightlifting, if that meant I needed to get stronger, then that meant that I was going to be okay with my body changing because that's what needed to happen in order for me to achieve my goal. And ever since I realized how badly I wanted to achieve that, that's when things changed and I started to really embrace my body. I actually, I, I look back on the, the, like the photos that I have of Shane and I, or just me, you know, in some swimmers. Um, and I'm like, wow, I, I can't believe how skinny I was. Um, and now I feel a lot more full. I feel very healthy. I feel so strong that, I love showing them off and I've just had to adjust my, my wardrobe accordingly to make it look complimentary. You know, mm -hmm. um, there'll be things that I still put on to this day where I'm like, Oh, back in the day that would have probably suited me. Mm -hmm. But now, um, you know, I, I wear things that I feel good in and that, that make that show off my muscles, but in an elegant way. Yeah. And one last question, because we do need to wrap it up. This is from Alice Living, who is a, a well-known fitness influencer here in the UK. And she says, she's an absolute icon. There you go. Um, I'd love to know how she manages her recovery during competitions and when she's training. Yep. Um, so recovery comes down to food and sleep, uh, especially through competition. When it comes to competition, it's very hard because you're on someone else's schedule, you know, the likelihood of being able to sauna every, you know, maybe three to five times a week is probably not going to happen. And plus when you're, you know, say for example, if you're saunering, which I regularly do throughout the season, I don't want to overheat myself and exhaust myself too much when I'm competing. Um, then I also use a lot of hypervolt, um, or Hyperice products. So the Hypervolt, the Venom Back, um, the Sphere, the Roller, like a lot of those products is something that I use in order to maintain and loosen up the body, um, if, especially if I don't have a body worker with me. I also take the right supplements and vitamins. So vitamins is like key. Um, if I don't have my supplements with me, the, the vitamins is something that I are essential to my nutrition. And then um, my food. So I am force feeding myself throughout competition every single day. Um, I have a banana, uh, you know, just a little bit before my event. So I'm not obviously bringing food up during the event. Mm -hmm. And I have to eat between 90 minutes to an hour before the event so that I have enough energy and I've stored enough um, throughout the body. I'll then also eat immediately after uh, my events and then obviously having a really nice wholesome dinner and a wholesome breakfast. Um, so I can't reiterate enough how it, how important it is to have wholesome foods. Mm. You know, you've got your fruit and your vegetables. You've also got your proteins and your carbohydrates. And I really try hard to, eat the clean versions rather than processed or packaged food um, because there's just so many artificial uh, flavors and, and colors. And, and, you know, if it has numbers on the label, I tend to steer yeah. away from that because I don't know what that is. Yeah. So if it, it has like 100% uh, orange, you know, if, if you're having orange juice and it's just got 100% oranges, yeah. That's my go-to. Um, I don't want to see added sugars or anything like that. Um, so wholesome foods is very important and probably, you know, like the first or second to sleep um, of a necessity in terms of recovery. But sleep is, it's essential. Um, you know, I think you can still function well or not, fueling your body as much as you know you require like your sleep and so when it comes to competition I try and get as many hours as I can typically it's about nine hours um it really depends there's there's been days where I have only had to function on 
four hours because we came in late that night and had to get up really early in the after, uh, mm. in the morning. So, um, you know, if I can sleep during competition as well, that's really important. But during the season itself, sleep is so important for recovery and making sure that um, training is good. So I try and at least get eight to nine hours as well. Um, mm. Pete, I know that there's like studies out there saying seven is enough, but because my job requires me to physically do things and put my body through a lot of strain, um, I try and get as much sleep as possible. Um, sometimes I find myself having 10 hours sleep, which is crazy, mm -hmm. um, but it's essential. And I think that it's very important for recovery as well. Um, mm -hmm. But again, at the end of the day, you just got to listen to the body. And I think that that's, that's what's gotten me through my journey so far is listening to it. What, what's working, what's not. Some studies say, you know, you need to do this, but if that's not how, if I don't pull, if I try it, cause I'm very open-minded. I love to experiment. If I try it and it doesn't feel right, it doesn't sit right with me, then what's the point of trying to force it if, if you don't feel good about it. So it really comes down to the individual as well. Yeah. Well, Tio, thank you so much for talking to me today. I could have talked to you for ages and I'm sorry I didn't get through the questions that a lot of people sent me, but um, you are a, an icon and an inspiration. And I don't say that like thank you. it's been an absolute privilege to meet you today. And thank you for joining me at Women's Health Weekenders. Thank you. No, thank you so much for having me. It was a true honor to be able to talk with you, Claire. Thank you so much.